Hey guys, how you doing? Uh, so, almost for, I forgot the pot yesterday, so I'm gonna do it today. Um, couldn't figure out what to make. And then I had an awesome lunch from Chef Lauren's that I ordered yesterday, that I got from Tap Food yesterday, and I found a fork. And I realized I'm gonna make a forked pot. What's that? A forked pot. You have no idea what a fork pot is, but you know, there's only so many shapes that we can make here. <laughs> to make it interesting. It's really, uh, so I made bowls, I made chips and dips, um, teapots and all those, those take several steps. So if you go into older videos that I made when this COVID thing first started, um, I showed you guys how we make teapots and mugs and those aren't done in one step. So to show you a video that's relatively interesting, I wanna show you something we make in one step. I'm waving at the Egan's, hi Egan's. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna make a forked pot. And uh, what is that? Let's see. So um, I realized that the centering part of all this is relatively boring. So I decided to go ahead and center my clay before I started. I'm gonna go ahead and open it up. So forked pots is uh, something we sort of made up ourselves here. It's not actually a technical term that I learned in college. Actually, John Hedges uh, kind of came up with this. So you guys might have seen that I made the cracked pot the other day um, with sodium silicate. This is uh, slightly different, very different. We don't have to wait for us the sodium silicate to dry. Or... Let's go ahead and move this closer. Oh, you love to see my face. All right, so there we go. You can see clay. Cool. So this is uh, what we call the forked pot, and it's just a decorative sort of way to make whatever form you're making a little more interesting. Um, I tell everyone here, I give you the voice. I show you how to make cylinders, I show you how to make bowls, I show you how to make what we call sexy pots, and you figure out what you want to say with it. So me, I tend to make uh, naked people and put them on pots. Some people, um, if you go through our Instagram and our Facebook, we have a couple artists, Irisi, uh, Tanya, they do absolutely beautiful drawings on their pots. So we give them the canvas, and they go ahead and do something fancy on that canvas. But sometimes you want to do something to the form or to the texture, to texture what you're making. So I am going to show you what we call a forked pot. So what I'm doing is I'm just making a cylinder, something uh, closed up. So I've been re-watching these videos and I have to tell you that I have found that by watching the videos, I can see exactly what I'm doing wrong. Um, that is causing my pots not to be symmetrical or not to be even. So it's been a great learning experience to do this. I appreciate all the people who say that it's meditative, even when my uh, voice gets in the way. I'll have to decline it. Um, But for me, one of the things I noticed when I was watching my bottle the other day is I tend to take my hands off the clay too fast. Sometimes it looks like I'm doing everything fast forward and I'm not. <laughs> I'm just moving too fast. So that whole slow the hell down thing is definitely something I have to start working a little bit on. I think it's because I don't want to bore you guys. <laughs> so I've been working a little too fast. And that's causing me to take my hands off my clay a little too fast and just sort of rush the process. Okay, so what I've done is just kind of created this sort of basic shape, but I left the bottom part of it um, thicker than I normally would. And I'm also going to smooth, I'm not going to put those fingerprints that I enjoy doing because that's going to fight a little with the, the forking that I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to get the water out of the inside of my pot. Um, one of the things I notice also when I've been re-watching these videos, I leave quite a bit of clay down here on the bottom. And we do something here called cylinder boot camp. And that is where I teach people to get all the clay up into their pot. And I've noticed I've been quite guilty because I have not been doing that. 
everything. So we have five more days till we open uh, camps and classes and So uh, but I am going away this weekend. So maybe I'll film a couple of extra pots before then tomorrow. All right, guys. So here's the forking. Ready? So I went ahead and I stopped my pot. I'm going to take my plastic fork from Chef Lauren's where I got an awesome salad yesterday. And I'm going to go ahead and with the wheel not moving, I'm going to fork my pot. I haven't done this in quite a while, so it just came to me. Again, this is from John Hedges. He's my partner over in Booton, an English guy. Um, so I don't know if they do this in England. <laughs> I don't want to go too deep. If I go too deep, uh, when the magic happens, I will actually mess it up. So I, I wanted to get it to stop right there. Um, Hoping you can see that. Let's see as I go around. All right, now much like the crack pot, I didn't have to heat this up, but I'm going to go inside, and now I'm going to start to shape it and make it a little sexier than how I started. I want to be careful not to do it too much because of those might have went a little deep on some of those cuts. I'm going to go down to the bottom again. Now this is an advanced thing. You're not going to take your first eight week class and go ahead and make a, a forked pot. I am not touching the outside of my pot very much because I don't want to smush the forking. What I do want to do is decide that right here is where the forking is going to stop. So here I'm going to smush give myself those little finger lines it's kind of like spin art um, you don't want to stop and look at it you kind of want the surprise when you're done um, so I'm gonna try and stretch it a little bit more and hope that I can uh, get the effects that I want without putting a hole through it I think it is a little bit more of a shoulder so I'm curling my fingers up you might have seen that that sort of changed a lot. The problem with getting older is I need reading glasses. And reading glasses would help me see my profile on my pot a little better. Okay, I'm actually going to think that's it. See what I can do. A little stretch a little more in the middle here. So I'm basically putting more pressure on my inside hand. Okay. I'm going to define the top here, give a little bit of a swirl. Stop my lip, which may be a little uneven. I'm going to get my water out of the inside. Take my hands out carefully because it's not wet. And uh, let's see if we can get this a little closer. You can see it when it stops. Ready? Here we go. Look at that. Not so bad. So I may have squished, I may have touched it a little bit too much with my hand on the outside, so it kind of smeared some of the forking marks. Now you're going to look at it and be like, wow, that's really not that nice looking. But what the texture does is texture makes things a lot more interesting when we glaze them. So an example would be this. So that's just one color, but with the carving, it makes it a little more interesting. And then something like this. Oh. Also, uh, with the texture, it looks kind of boring when it's this square, but what it actually does is it makes the glaze um, kind of change where in the deeper forker, forking part, parts, um, it'll be thicker. So sometimes it might be a brighter color or even a more intense color within those cracks. And then when the raised parts, it kind of breaks. So it won't be, uh, it won't be as, as bright in those areas. So, because I can't leave long enough alone, I'm going to stretch a little bit more. Get more of a sort of topish feeling. Topish, not topish like food, but top as in spinning top. A little more of a defined line there. 
All right, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off that excess part. Now, because I was so kind of adamant on trying to get more up from the bottom, there should be less here of a waste. Um, a little few ounces of clay actually does um, result in losing about a half inch to a pot of your pot of the height. So this much clay would have actually probably gotten me that much of a pot more if I would have gotten that clay into the pot. Now some of these little fork marks are a little dangerous. They're going to become sharp. So when this becomes leather hard and I trim it, I will get those, uh, those little burrs off of there so it'll stop it from being sharp. So, switch this so you guys can see. Sorry about my face, really close up. Switch that. And you guys can see uh, what's going on here. That'll make you a little dizzy or hypnotize you, unsure as to which one it's going to do. All right, guys, so if you haven't signed up for camps yet, do it now. Um, a lot of my classes are full and our camps are full. Plenty of room in Booton, so go ahead and sign up. Classes start next week. Ladies night, couples night, all that is back. All you got to do is sign up. Um, I'll see you guys later. Have a good night.